wish I had a son as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and black hair like ebony. Not long after, the queen got pregnant. However, during her birth, there were some complications. <coughs> promise you will take care of her son. I will. I promise. Why? I. I don't do anymore. She's. She's gone. I guess I'll just marry off some other queen. Ten. We are gathered here today to marry Queen Rochelle and King Gonzales. Snow White and his stepmother did not get along at all. People haven't even stopped sending me MySpace messages yet. It's only been a week and my dad's already married one of his woes. Who does this girl think she is? My mother? She needs to quit busting my chops. Add me on MySpace, by the way, at Snow White 7777777. The queen had a looking glass. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? My queen are the fairest of them all. The queen was happy with the answer, however, days later. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? My queen, you're old now. Your stepson's prettier than you. I hope this mirror realizes that we're going to have a problem. our prices, so, uh, 50. 50? 25 in your Wi-Fi password. Deal. Okay, okay, okay. Can you just not kill me? Like, today? Maybe some other time? Just not today. I'd really appreciate it. Nah, the bears are gonna eat you anyway, so I don't really care. I mean, I honestly don't even care if he left or not. For one, there's bears, and second, I already got my Wi-Fi password. Look. Let me stay here. Hear me out. There's a crazy witch trying to kill me. You can stay here only if you cook and clean for us. Do yeah. you not open the door for the witch because she most likely already knows you're here. Of course not. Of course not. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? My queen, you're old now. Your stepson's prettier than you. And he's living with the dwarves, like, downtown. I can't let you in. Please, it's all right. I'm just selling some new choices carrots. I get it. Please. Come on in. Yeah. I guess I'll take it. Right. Goodbye. Bye. Now. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all now? My queen, you're old now. Your stepson's prettier than you. And he's living with the dwarves. Who is it? Then all the merchants. I can't let you in. Well, we're selling fruit. Come on. Fruit? Sure. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the 
embarrass of them all now. My queen, you're old now. Your stepson's prettier than you. What? He is still alive. I'm gonna kill that boy myself. Who is it? I'm selling pizza. For real? You mean I sold your life, Tom? What? He is so handsome. Can I please take him to take to my dad's castle? No. Please, I'll pay for your Netflix. I guess. I can't believe you accepted that offer. I had to finish Stranger Things. Oh. <coughs> You're alive! You saved me. I can tell I got invited to the wedding. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. We are gathered here today to marry Princess Chalissa and Snow White. You may kiss the bride. The queen was tricked and killed at the wedding. Snow White and his princess lived happily ever Before there was a written language, people told stories by word of mouth or oral tradition. They did this because they wanted to ensure that part of their culture was passed down to the next generation. Most of these stories had a different reason to be told. It could have been for a moral, a warning, something their culture did, or maybe it was just something, a funny story that they had. Well, since these stories had to be remembered, things tend to get changed, added in, or altered from each telling from person to person. But for the longest time, it worked, and they were just passed down without, with little hindrance. Unfortunately, as the years went on and more written languages came about, People tended to forget about the oral tradition and began writing more stories and making up their own and tend to forget about their less, their less popular now oral tradition stories. Well, two brother, brothers by the name of Grimm figured this out and they wanted to change that and they wanted to bring back some of the German culture and retell some of their stories. Between the years 1812 and 1857, the Grimm brothers set out to record and preserve several fading German fairy tales. The brothers published seven editions to each fairy tale, each one varying vastly from the first. And by the time the seventh edition was published, it was very much changed. The Grimm brothers wanted to gift these tales to the German people and restore part of their culture towards them. They just never realized that these stories would become a relevant part of all cultures around the world. While these two men never really thought that these stories should be read to children, nowadays many people read these stories and let their children watch videos of these fairy tales. The most recognizable modern fairy tales come from Disney, uh, the Walt Disney Company. Disney is very well known for revamping old chill, old fairy tales and making them relevant today. The only difference I noticed in the two versions of Little Snow White, if any at all because they were very minor details, were the fact that at the beginning of the 1812 version it explains how the characteristics that the queen mentions that she wants her future children to have came about. Um, for example, as white as snow came from the fact that she was sitting by a window in a winter day and it was very snowy outside. So that's where she got that one. The lips as red as blood came from the fact that she pricked her finger and um, it starts bleeding. So that's where she got that one. The storyboard definitely helped a lot because it gave us an idea of what 
we needed to get together supplies or different people to help us act out our fairy tale. One thing that was for sure different from our filming and our storyboard was the fact that in our storyboard, we had this vision. However, we hadn't visited the place where we were trying to film at. So we didn't really know what we were limited to. Our vision was Snow White, pretty obvious and straightforward. When you get a comedic genius such as me, someone who rolls with the creative juices and is very outgoing such as Shelby, and two driving force producers, it's easy to see where the story is going to go. We, did not, we didn't want to change the story too much as it would take away from any kind of fairy tale culture which might tarnish the story in any way. We just wanted to change just enough to make it funny. Just enough to put our own little unique twist and make it something enjoyable for the audience. We decided to make this version of Snow White in more of a modern setting. A modern setting of Snow White allows us to take advantage of the idea of me being Snow White, turning down unpopular vegetables and nasty stuff like that, and ultimately accepting the delicious, more popular slice of pizza that, ultimate, that also leads to my death. The choice of making me Snow White made sense in so many different ways, more ways than one. Beforehand, we knew I had a pair of all-white jeans that would work perfectly for Snow White. And it worked good in combo with my skin to be white as snow. I also had a pair of red shoes that went good for red sh er, shoes as red as blood. And not to mention my hair, dark as bark. Black as bark. Um, Shelby being the princess and the evil witch... Uh, or queen, whichever you want to call it, uh, also made sense because she could easily play both parts because she already had two dresses from previous uh, events. And um, pretty much. For Little Snow White, Rachel, Yahira, Casey, and I did our video all in one day or our movie. Um, our creative choices that we came up with is whenever, like in one part, Casey is like crawling through the woods when he's going to the Doris house we figured that we could use the Pink Panther theme song music and put that in there to add like some fun and creativity into that and that actually like became like our favorite part of the whole entire movie um together as a group and we like could watch it over and over and just laugh at that one scene for like forever okay um oh gosh the fonts we wanted to actually make our movie more like a reality tv show and so you can see like in the movie whenever there's like the interviews of the characters and the actors and actresses we used um a trans transition where like the name will pop up and it will tell you who they are and basically like their role in the whole scene in the movie so that was really cool and a good process and actually a higher I came up with that while we were putting the whole movie up together um some problems we encountered we struggled with messing up some a lot and one problem we had in the beginning and luckily we realized it was it wasn't windy outside but there was like a noise and it was actually from my phone case when we were videoing so we had luckily we noticed it in like the first couple um, shots we took before finishing up so we had to take my case off and then another problem was our phones were dying and so we had to like switch up phones throughout the whole thing and like this phone would die so we had to use somebody else's phone and so whenever we were all sending them to my computer it was confusing because if we couldn't find a certain video a scene we needed we had to figure out which phone it was from and go back and resend it on that phone um, we didn't really have any problems um, other than that, because we all got along really well, and it was a really good process, and we got it done um, in a day, so that wasn't hard. 